All right. All right. We're live. Hello. All right. So good good morning, good afternoon, good night. This is Phil from the ATM Mastermind Group page. Uh, we're going live tonight like we go live every other Monday at 6 central time in the evening. Um, on today's topic, we're going to be discussing, do I need a team for my ATM business? So I get this question a lot. Do I need a team for my ATM business? So I thought we would address the issues tonight. Um, I'm a team player, but when I first started, I didn't have a team. So we, I did everything that there was to do myself. Uh, as we started uh, growing our business, then we developed a team um, and it became easier for me in the ATM business. So what I'm going to do is we're going to break down what I believe are the five areas that you need um, to focus on in the ATM business. And some of you have strengths in these five areas. Some of you do not have strengths in these five areas. So I know for me, um, a few of them I had strengths and others I did not. Um, and when I didn't have the strengths in those areas, I was looking for somebody to help me in those areas. Um, so you can say I developed a team around these areas um, to focus on what I was good at and the stuff that I wasn't, try to get somebody to help me. Sometimes that's a family member. Sometimes it's just a friend. Um, sometimes it could be a parent. Sometimes it could be uh, anybody and anybody that maybe is strong in these areas. So I'm going to go over these areas and hopefully this add value to you guys um, in the ATM business. Keep in mind that uh, I own PDQ Merchant Enterprises where um, we sell ATMs, we process ATM transactions, we offer free processing, we sell parts, we do repairs uh, in the ATM business. We also have a locator service for those of you guys who are looking to get into the ATM business or you're just looking to expand your ATM business. We also do that. We also have a course that teaches you from A to Z how to get into the ATM business and be successful in the ATM business. So we do all that. Um, been in the ATM business for 23 years. All right. So let's get started. All right. Um, number one area in the ATM business um, that you either need a team or you do not need a team is sales. Sales is the lifeblood of the ATM business. Getting new locations. Um, most of the people that I talk to in the beginning, uh, they have one up to three locations. They have friends that own a grocery store, convenience store, barber shop. Um, oh, there's a hot phone. I got to shut it off. All right, so the power of live, huh? All right, so um, so they have these locations, but after they 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 start with their uh, few locations, then they they quickly run out and they need more locations. So this is where uh, the sales comes into play. So some people are introverts, some people are extroverts. Um, and some people fake being an extrovert, but they're truly introverts. So it depends on what you are and, and how hungry you are in the situation. For me, I I'm a bit of an extrovert, so I had no problem talking to people, but I was young in the game. And so it was it was a challenge because people, no matter what I was saying, sometimes when you're young, people look at you differently and you could be speaking 100% the right language and everything, but because you're young, you're not taken seriously. So when I was doing, first started out, I was younger to the game, uh, basically 20, 24 years younger than I am now. Um, and even though um, I said all the right things, I necessarily wasn't the right way. Uh, people didn't take me as serious as they do now because I'm older. So what I did uh, is I always use what I call a conduit to relay my message, whether it was me or somebody else. And then I, it made it easier. So even today, I still use a conduit um, to help me or a maven or somebody who can express the situation maybe a little bit better. Or sometimes it's a language barrier because uh, I don't I only speak English. And, and we have uh, in the ATM business, you're going to find that you're going to there will be people um, that uh, if you're dealing with restaurant owners, a lot of a lot of a lot of people who speak Greek and Korean. Um, you can you're if you're talking with convenience stores, there's usually an Indian presence there, um, Pakistani, Indian. Um, and so 
there's another language there. Um, same thing with gas stations. Uh, so it always helps. And if you're dealing with uh, grocery stores, a lot of Latino presence in there. So it just depends on who you're talking to. But sales is all about getting to know that person. So no like and trust. So they got to know you before they like you and they got to like you before they trust you and they got to trust you before they do business with you. So no like and trust is what the game is all about. The faster you can get to the trust factor, the faster you can get locations, the faster you can make money in the ATM business. So even though I believe that you don't need a team, sometimes a team helps out in this arena and definitely uh, getting new locations, it always helps. So how do you develop a team? One of the things you do is you talk to everybody and anybody you can, and you're also looking for whatever arena that you're in. You got to make sure that you uh, you can hit hit that arena. So if you're looking for, and I always use this example, if you're looking for the bar and restaurant arena, um, I always look for beer salesmen, liquor salesmen, uh, food purveyors, people who bring in the towels and the rugs. Uh, sometimes people bring in uniforms. Those are all good people who are already, already talking to those bar owners and they have a relationship with those bar owners. So for me, coming into the game, um, in those arenas, I'm looking for somebody who's already talking to those people on a weekly or a monthly basis. That's how it makes it easier for me to get bar locations. Same thing with convenience stores, same thing with grocery stores. You're always looking for people who already have a direct relationship with those people, and then they can get you in the door. Because um, once you get in the door, then it becomes easier to close a deal. And after you close a deal, now you're making what we call residual income. Okay. A lot of people don't get it twisted. A lot of people will say, hey, you know what? It's not, it's, uh, you know, people use the word passive income. I use it myself. It's really, truly just residual income. You're making the money without making the sale over and over again. But um, so do we get a team? Do we not have a team? You can do it yourself. The ways I laid it out is the way to get it done yourself. However, once you develop those relationships, now you're really developing a team. And I believe team is the best way to do anything. It makes it faster and easier. You can do it by yourself. But what you're really doing is you're looking to develop a team in the sales department. Again, getting those... Uh, locations is the lifeblood of this, uh, be successful in this business. All right. Now, point number two is we have tech support. Now for me, I was already good in this. I was great in this area is I was one of those kids back in the day. I could take apart <laughs> a tube TV, um, and put it back together, but that was, you know, they don't know such thing anymore, but I was very handy. I could, um, I was good at wiring. I was good at, um, taking things apart and putting them back together. So logistically, uh, this wasn't a stretch for me. Um, when we first started out, I didn't have anybody to help me. and just kind of fumbled around through the process, talked to people on the phone for tech support. Um, and this, this helped me develop uh, the skill set to fix anything with the ATM. The ATM, to be honest with you, it's a very simple um, mechanical process for the most part. You have a dispenser which is pretty much all mechanical. There are sensors on the dispenser. Um, but if you're buying new, the ATM is going to last you five to 10. It'll, it, it's going to last you five good years with very, very, very little service issues. You're really talking about a paper jam and a, and a bill um, and a bill jam for the most part. Those are going to be your big, your, your little areas. And it's going to be very simple, su super simple. If you're buying used, now you're probably buying an ATM that's probably five to 10 years old. You're probably somewhere, let's go for an average, seven years into the game. The dispenser is going to be worn out. The key, the card reader is going to be wore, uh, starting to be worn out. You'll probably have to repair that. The keypad, the battery life might be um, start to be shot on that. That'll cause some errors. So when you get there, you'll have to replace the keypad. All right, not a big thing. It's pretty much plug and play, four screws. But um, I have seen people, how do I take the keypad out? It's four screws. But they didn't. They don't understand. You have to take um, the top part of the ATM. You have to take the screws out so you can get back, and then the whole thing will open up. So uh, do I need tech? Uh, do I need tech for that or help? 
Um, you could. And okay, Phil, well, who do, where do I find guys that are tech? Um, you know, if you need additional help, we uh, work with a third party that will get you, if you need it, um, tech support to come out into your ATM. But you're gonna you're gonna look anywhere that's been between two to four hundred dollars. Uh, if you need help, you can always FaceTime us. We can help you and and give you some support that way. Um, it's it's it, it can be done. Um, just to give you an idea where where to look and what to do on a particular unit. Whew. I always get tired this time of the night. I don't know. All right. So that's that's point number two. Now you got your fill your filling which is your point number three, that's you're filling your ATMs. Okay, most of the time you're filling it yourself, but do you know how to reconcile your ATM? Do you know how to make sure that you have the right amount of money in your ATMs to, so you can cash balance it on a daily, if not to the minute um, point? Uh, so if you what you want to do is you first you learn that series of, okay, I know I started with, let's say, $10,000. I got four ATMs. I got 10,000 between the ATMs, my bank account, and with the money I'm holding. All right, so that's a good thing. Now, if you want to hire somebody or you want to uh, eliminate filling because maybe you're a salesperson, you want to go out and find new locations and you want to have somebody uh, fill your ATMs, well, how do I do that? Um, it can be done. Now, for me, it's not really um, a lot of labor I'm talking about maybe an hour, if you have four ATMs, an hour a week. So it's four hours a week. I'm sure you can find four hours in your busy day to fill that. I would try to minimize, I would try to keep um, the ATM, uh, keep all the money and don't spend uh, that on a tax person. But some people, well, some people like to or want to do that. So for me, I didn't, I didn't start really hiring until I had 30 ATMs um, out there. But if, you know, I would say at least get 10 before you, you look to hire anybody. Um, but you can, but some people, I talked to a guy in New York, he's hundred percent hands off. He has about, he has about 20 ATMs. He doesn't fill the ATMs. He doesn't service the ATMs. He doesn't move the ATMs. He doesn't do anything. So that's how he runs his business. So that's good for uh, some people. For me, I was more a hands-on person. I want to understand every aspect of the business before I handed it off. Um, but that's how you do it. Ooh, oh, excuse me again. All right. Um, so you you can if you're filling your ATMs, you got to understand how to cash balance your ATMs to the penny. So if you decide to hire somebody, um, you have checks and balances, policies and procedures into the ATM business. So uh, you don't you don't start to lose your money, all right? And um, then point number four is uh, accounting and paperwork. So um, we have a bookkeeper that basically uh, goes through our ATM and makes sure that everything is done. Uh, we download all the transactions on a, on a daily basis and we import that into QuickBooks. So we do that. Uh, every day to make sure that we get all our money. And then at the end of the year, that, that'll give us our money or that'll give us how much each account made. And um, so we can uh, send them a 1099. Um, we're with Switch Commerce. They also have that functionality in their portal. So you can, uh, so you can look at it at the end of the year and give your, um, give your bookkeeper, these people got to get 1099s or you could do it yourself. Um, uh, we set up everybody on a statement, so they get an automatic statement. We ACH the money, so make it easy, and um, it, it makes it real easy to do that. So therefore, I don't have to write, I don't have to write checks, I don't have to download statements, and then print out statements and send them. I automated that whole process, and along with the QuickBooks uh, functionality, it makes it pretty easy to do. We hired a bookkeeper uh, years ago to do this on a um, once a week basis that that's, that's what they do, but it can be done. Um, you can, you can definitely do that. Uh, the portal makes it easy to do that after a given amount of time, uh, after a given amount of time in a bunch of ATMs, then you might want to look to get a bookkeeper. Uh, you, I would 
highly recommend you use QuickBooks on uh, pretty much when you start your business. It makes it easy. Sometimes the bank um, or people want to see P&Ls and balance sheets. I remember when I first started out, uh, I was doing everything by hand before we used QuickBooks. Um, that was tough when somebody says, hey, can I see a balance sheet and a, and a, and a P&L? It was a nightmare because I was doing it all by hand. I had to create that. Now, it would have clicked on a mouse. I can I can give that no problem. Here's the balance sheet. Here's the P&L. Here's a cash flow statement if you need to see that. So we do that real easy. But in the beginning, I didn't have that. I was doing it all by hand. So highly recommend you use QuickBooks. It'll simplify your business and make it easy. All right. So uh, we're going to go. We got some questions here. Uh, where do I find possible sales people for employees? All right. So what I would do is um, the first thing that I would do is I would try to figure out what lane am I in? Uh, am I in the laundry mat space? Am I in hotels? Am I in convenience stores, gas stations? Where do I want to be and who do I want to target? And then I would look for the people who sell those those people. Um, again, I was I would use the uh, the idea. Let's say if I'm using if I'm trying to get bar owners or bars, I'm looking at beer distributors, liquor salesmen, uh, people who sell the rugs, the towels, um, people who sell uniforms and or food purveyors. Those are all people who service the bar industry. I'd look to make friends with them because those are the people who will um, be firsthand to, to help me get in the door because they already have established relationships or they got to sell to them because the bars, let's say they carry cores. There you have the cores line. That's going to be my ticket to get into the bars because they already have a relationship with those bar owners. So that's how I would do that for salespeople. Um, people who are already in those arenas are always the best people to um, to develop a relationship for a salesperson. All right. Okay. So uh, we got our first question. QuickBook is is this is a smart option. All right. Thank you very much. Do you use a lead generating software? Um, no, I did try. I bought a program to get a lead generator um, program, um, and it just wasn't. It, it was. I guess it was a little too complicated for for me to use. I I hired a lead generator. Uh, there was a guy who came up with a program called Lead Scraper, is what he called. I tried the program. Um, it wasn't it wasn't for me. I hired their team to go out and uh, develop uh, locations or generating some. Um, I think the program was brilliant, but I didn't really understand how to use it. And so I hired them to go out and create leads for us so I could re recommend it to you guys out there. It didn't, it didn't work the way um, the guy told me it would work. Uh, and then so when I, I, I couldn't get it to work for me, so then I went out and I hired them. I said, okay, well, if it's your, your program, you know how to use it. I'll hire you to go out and generate leads. So I hired them for about six months to go out and generate leads. It wasn't it, the leads that they generated for me weren't good leads. So we just scrapped the whole program. I walked away. Um, maybe we didn't un, know how to use it, or maybe the people that they they were recommending us to use um, didn't it didn't work out for us. So I just scrapped the whole thing. So um, I think it would it would have been. Uh, yeah, lead scrape isn't a good option. Yeah, um, that's what I found out, at least for us. I'm not saying it's not a good option. It just wasn't a good option for us. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know if there's other options out there. Um, we just, I just use uh, a locator um, to find locations. Other, We also use finders and I create finders like I told you guys. I use a, probably a bunch of different ways to get locations, but uh, that that system didn't work for us. But anytime somebody has something new, I always try it out. I want to see if it works because maybe it does work. Um, and then we can find different locations and better locations. Always looking for new locations. As I said before, in the in the ATM business, you have to continually find new locations to be successful in this business. If you're not, if you don't find locations, you're not good. Um, you won't. You'll you'll start losing. And you don't grow your business. You got to continue to grow your business. So, you know, maybe you you find ten new locations this year. You lose two, and three of them are you lose two because of attrition, and maybe th and maybe two or three. You know what? They're just not 
they're not doing the revenue that you needed to do, and you pull the ATM. So it's a constant rotation like this. You constantly get new locations. You're constantly moving the ATMs to better, uh, the better yourself. Um, yeah, thank you. Nice seeing you, Nick. Um, one of the people I talked to. Speaking of uh, conferences, I talked to uh, one of the one of the people, and they're new to the game. They've been in the game for a little, for just a minute. And I said, you know, uh, how what we how are you successful? And they said, look, I, I got a few locations, I got a few locations, and then all of a sudden I hit that one big location where now I'm generating five, six, seven hundred dollars a month in revenue. So I said, wow, that's that's a nice story. And they said, yep, but that's what it always takes. It just takes that one location to make it uh, successful, and then sometimes those that location will carry the rest of the business until you find that other location. So you got to continually look. Don't be satisfied with what you got. Always strive to get a bit more um, of the locations and better locations. So again, for us, it's always that magic number. I'm looking to do 100 transactions. I'm looking to put $250 a month in my pocket, every location. Um, if I don't do that, then I'm looking for uh, replacing, I put them on the weed list. And then from there, what we do is, is we look for, I call it warm storage. I'm not, now I'm looking for that other location. And I know, okay, I'm going to pull that location and go get 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 another location. So um, sometimes, you, you know, sometimes we're in expansion, we're buying, we're buying, buying machines. Then at, and usually right now in the fall, what I'm doing is I'm pulling back. I'm taking those lo locations that didn't, that didn't perform. And I give them, I mean, I probably give them a little too long, to be honest with you. I probably give them six to nine months before we say, you know what, this isn't working out. It's time to, time to pull those ATMs and look for new business. So if there's no more questions tonight, we're going to go into our soon section. Um, thank you, Mr. Barrett. Thank you uh, for joining for joining uh, the live tonight. Um, if this was helpful, please put a couple fire emojis in the chat. That would be great. Again, um, what we do is we go live every other Monday at uh, at six at six p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, we sell ATMs. We do processing. And we have we sell parts and offer service for any and all of your ATM needs. Um, so I just want to thank you guys for joining tonight. Uh, we'll see you guys in two weeks. And uh, thank you guys very much. Bye-bye.